So, uh, in the previous section, we have uh, discussed about the processing of a composite material. So, in that one, we have discussed the, on the open mold process. Okay. So, in the open mold process, we have seen uh, so how uh, we can process the composites using a hand layer process, okay, and which is used for a, a continuous as well as discontinuous fiber, and a spray up process uh, which is used for a discontinuous fiber and uh, a sheet molding compounding process okay which is used uh, to form a thin sheets uh, okay which are used uh, for further in process further processing in the compression molding okay and uh, we have seen the filament winding which is an automatic process where we can produce uh, the pipes okay so like some aloe sections okay so that's a uh, using uh, a mandrel so which decide the shape of the composite material okay so moving on with the uh, discussion and the processing of the composite material so here we go with the uh, closed mold process okay so we have seen the advantages and disadvantages associated with the open mold process so in order to overcome those uh, uh, disadvantages and uh, uh, there are few categories of uh, uh, composite materials which uh, need okay a closed mold process okay the processing may be at a high temperature okay in a different manner okay so in that one uh, in the co uh, closed mold process so we have a few classification like a uh, we are going to take up a compression molding okay and uh, bag molding so in the bag molding we are going to have a three uh, classification the vacuum bag molding pressure bag molding and the autoclave method and uh, we are going to discuss something about injection molding which is normally used for a processing of a plastics as well as a polymer matrix composites and uh, we are going to discuss on the rtm that is a resin transfer molding method okay so we are going to discuss uh, uh, there are some four process which normally we are going to use it for a use it as a uh, close the mold processing methods okay okay right so uh, depending on uh, the type of uh, the compact uh, method which we use uh, okay so in the bag molding process so we are going to look into the first uh, method uh, that is a bag molding process the setup looks like this so as we uh, told like uh, so here also the end product uh, is uh, resembling the the shape of the mold okay so this is the mold which we are going to have and the mold is covered uh, with the gel coat okay so as we have discussed in uh, and layer process okay so the easy removal of the end product uh, is facilitated by the the gel coat which you're going to provide it over the mold process okay so once uh, the gel coat is applied over the that one so the fibers okay impregnated with the resin is uh, placed over this one or you can place like a, a a layer of a resin so over a layer of a fiber and over of a resin okay so we can have it like a sandwich so then we are going to have a, a flexible plastic sheet above that one so which will be having a clamps at both the ends at the end which are clamped to the mold cavity okay so once uh, these are uh, clamped to the mold cavity so then from the openings the vacuum is drawn with the help of a pump okay so once uh, we are going to remove the air okay air particles inside the composite uh, material okay so it is going to ensure that uh, there are no trapped air particles which are going to create a air void inside the uh, end product okay so that is going to ensure and uh, uh, this is closed over with the flexible plastic bag so there will not be any contamination okay so compared with the open mold process okay so that's how exactly we can have so here so a bag bag is nothing but this one a, a flexible plastic sheet okay so this is what we call as a, a bag so which is uh, covered over the the end product okay so by applying the vacuum so that is going to compact the end product in a uniform way to get a, a compacted end product so in a similar way 
okay so if you look into the uh, advantages and disadvantages okay, so we'll come to this uh, later so if you see the second method okay that is a prag, uh, pressure bag molding okay so as the name itself indicates so here we are going to apply the pressure so in the previous one we have seen it's a vacuum okay so we are going to create a vacuum to ensure that uh, so we are going to get a defect free and a, a uniform a compacted end product and here instead of a vacuum we are going to use a pressure okay so in a pressure so we are going we need to have a, a little more uh, load okay or a, a compactness compared to the vacuum so at that time we go with the pressure bag molding okay so when you look into the pressure bag molding so the below setup okay the bottom setup will remain same compared to the vacuum bag molding okay so we are going to have a mold cavity and above that one so we are going to have a gel coat so above that one we are going to have a, a layers of a resin and a reinforcement resin and a reinforcement and those things are clamped you can say here okay so from the top portion so there will be a flexible bag you can see it here okay that is a rubber bag uh, here it is not inflated so in the previous step it uh, in the next step it will be inflated one okay so it is placed over here and uh, air pressure is applied from the top portion okay so when it is closed and air pressure is applied so this uh, rubber bag so will act or uh, creates a pressure on the the resin and the fiber which are already placed in the mold cavity okay and it, it, it is going to create a uniform pressure throughout this one and we are going to get a end product here okay so that is what exactly you can see the difference from the vacuum to the pressure okay so wherever it requires to have a more pressure or more compactness okay so uniform uh, compactness to be uh, uh, applied over a end product so then we go with the pressure bag molding and if you look into these two methods okay that is a vacuum and a pressure bag molding okay one important thing to be noted here is the bag which you are going to use okay so in the pre, uh, vacuum also and even in the pressure bag mold also so whatever the pressure we are going to apply so it is dependent on the, the this bag okay so this bag should be leak proof okay and it should be uh, having a uh, that much strength to apply the pressure okay whenever there is a air or whenever there is a vacuum which you are going to apply okay it should have uh, enough strength in order to uh, transfer that whatever the load which you are going to apply to the composite material so okay so here the design of these mold and the uh, the material which you are going to use it for this uh, bag uh, is going to play an important role or a, a, a parameter which controls the process okay so that is about the pressure bag molding and uh, the improved version of uh, this pressure bag molding is a autoclave process okay so autoclave process is nothing but so the same setup will be in the furnace okay so instead of uh, uh, applying a pressure okay or maybe the vacuum inside the process uh, so we are going to heat this one uh, to a particular temperature we are going to heat this one to a particular temperature so where uh, the curing of this end product is going to take place uh, with, with by the or the in the presence of a heat okay so here also so uh, the curing is going to okay so is going to ensure the end product which we are going to get it from uh, at the end will be having a, a good, good strength okay so even sometimes so inside the autoclave the laminate is subjected to vacuum pressure and a heat simultaneously okay so many a times so there will there will be a combination of vacuum and a pressure so which will be applied in order to ensure the compactness of the uh, composite material okay so normally this uh, these whatever the bag molding process okay so vacuum or a pressure or maybe the autoclave methods are normally used in order to produce the automobile bodies okay so aircraft components okay or maybe uh, like a, a wing spares okay so maybe flying control surfaces so all those things can be done using uh, these uh, uh, bag molding process okay so even uh, when we are going to use a autoclave method okay so that is going to uh, what you call uh, ensures that uh, along with the pressure and a vacuum okay so when you apply the heat uh, there will be a proper curing of the end product okay the strength will be uh, more compared to the remaining bag and a uh, uh, vacuum bag and a pressure bag molding process okay so that's about the uh, bag molding process so the next process in the closed mold process uh, 
processing of a composite is a injection molding process okay so in the injection so if you look into the word itself it says like inject okay so here the uh, polymeric material so which is a uh, already filled with the fibers okay the fibers may be like a particles or a short fibers okay it is not uh, suited for a, a continuous fiber so the fibers will be in the form of a particles or maybe like a, uh, a short fibers okay so these are called it as like a pellets okay so pellets already prepared so before feeding into the injection molding uh, machine okay so the setup looks like this okay so when you see the things here so this whole process uh, structure is a mold okay so mold will be having a one fixed part and one a remover part okay so which is clamped here you can see the clampings here okay so again here the shape of the mold is going to decide the shape of the end product which you are going to get okay you can see it here again it's a dow tail here okay and there are clamping here so when you are going to take out that one so you can easily remove the end product okay and this is a fixed one and this is a uh, removable one okay which can be attached and uh, detached from the surface and uh, this is an important one so which is going to control the process parameters okay so this is a screw okay so the designing of this screw is an important uh, parameter in the injection molding process okay you can see the threads over the screws okay and it moves uh, forward and uh, backward okay so a motor will be attached here okay the rotation is going to decide uh, so how much forward forward movement and a backward movement uh, this uh, uh, screw is going to have and this screw uh, this will be connected to a hopper you can see it here okay so there will be a, a raw material so raw material in the form of a pellets is fed into the hopper and then so there will be a squeezing action in between the screw and the barrel okay screw and the barrel so there will be a, a clearance in between the barrel and the screw okay so when the screw is going to rotate so that is going to uh, what you call uh, give a squeezing motion okay or a squeezing movement to, to the plastic which is going to flow in between the screw and the barrel okay so once it is going to move forward so what will happen it squeezes the plastic and it injects that one to the mold cavity okay and once the uh, mold is filled with the proper uh, uh, polymeric material so then it is let, uh, left for a curing and once the curing process is done then it is taken out by declamping the process so this process is a totally automatic one okay so once uh, the pellets are fed into the uh, hopper okay they are fed into the barrel they are transferred to the barrel uh, barrel and the movement of the or the rotation of this screw is going to squeeze okay or is going to mix up these uh, plastics and it is going to melt okay so along with the squeezing movement here it is melted okay so a heat is applied to the barrel so where the plastic is melted okay or it may not be in a motor state but it is it gets a soften it gets a soften so once it gets softened so then it is pushed into the mold cavity and it is going to take the shape of the mold and the once it gets cured okay cured it is going to take out out from the mold cavity and if you look into the advantages okay so here normally complex and uh, intricate shapes can be designed and manufactured okay so once the injection molds have been designed to the customer specification and the pressure presses pre programmed and the actual molding process is a very quick compared to other methods of molding means uh, it takes a time in order to prepare the uh, mold okay and even to design the uh, what you call the screw for a particular process so depending upon the type of the material whether it may be a thermoplastic or maybe a thermo set okay so in a plastic injection molding it is possible to use a fillers in the injection mold these fillers reduce the density of the plastic while it is being molded okay so when it is a, when there is a squeezing action okay and a mixing of uh, these uh, fibers with the uh, polymeric uh, matrix and all okay so there may be a re reduction in the density due to use of these uh, filler material in that one the process uh, possesses the ability to use the uh, different types of plastic simultaneously so as i said uh, so it can be used for a thermoset as well as a thermoplastic material filled with the uh, particulate uh, reinforcement a majority of the injection molding process is uh, performed by machines robotics which uh, sole operator can control the manage so automation is a uh, a possible and it's a 
a quick product, uh, rate of production okay so there will be high production compared to the remaining methods so limitations high cost the design will have to be created before any process may begin okay so design and development of a parts that will work well with the injection molding often takes a very long time and this is not a preferred method for manufacturing of a short production that is a so when a, a proper mold is designed okay when a proper mold is designed and uh, when a pro, uh, this screw is designed for a particular process and it should be used for a mass production then the cost per product will get a uh, reduces so if you are going to use for a, a, a job production like a single one or uh, some few uh, five or ten like that so then the cost per product will be very very high so uh, you have to choose the process in such a way that uh, the process will be used for a mass production okay so here you can see the animation of this injection molding okay so you can see the process like a clamping injection cooling and ejection okay so you can see the uh, sequences here okay first will be the clamping of this mold okay so uh, you can see it here like this first it will be clamped okay then the plastic which will be fed to the hopper is injected by the screw okay so then it is cooled okay that is the curing process will take place and uh, declamping will be done and the end product will be collected so you can see the whole process is uh, automated in order to get the mass production okay so that's how exactly we can use the injection molding okay for a different uh, process okay so this process is used uh, to uh, produce the uh, front and rear bumpers okay so and the uh, rear uh, uh, fenders and other parts in the automobiles okay so wherever it comes to the automobile body parts and all so easily we can use this process in order to produce the thing okay so the next process uh, will be resin transfer okay so resin transfer uh, in a short form we are, we are going to call it as a rtm method okay so resin transfer molding process so here uh, the resin transfer is normally a low pressure and a uh, closed mold process so normally it is used for a thermo set plastic okay and uh, we can use it for a thermo uh, plastics also sometimes it is used for a thermo plastics where we can go with a, a different type process okay so here so we have a, a two uh, different methods where we can use this method to produce the composite material okay so first one we are going to have a resin reservoir here okay so then we are going to have two parts in the mold cavity so one is the bottom and one is the upper part so the bottom portion will be having a, a cavity which is resembles the final product and in that one we are going to keep the fibers okay so fibers may be in a mat form or maybe oven uh, like a, a cloth okay so then it is uh, closed and then the uh, re uh, resin is transferred through the injection port okay so and then there will be a one more opening in order to create the vacuum or to remove the air or, or to ensure that uh, the mold is filled with the resin also okay and once the mo uh, mold is prepared or filled with the resin okay so it is uh, uh, the re resin transfer is cut off and then it is uh, left to the curing and then the end product is taken okay so the next process will be something like this okay so where we are going to have a preform so preform is consisting of a uh, only the fibers okay so fibers filled with the a filler material okay or maybe the charge and all okay so the charge is something like a like a fuel okay so which is heated and which is placed with the preform and it is transferred to the mold cavity here okay so once the mold cavity uh, is filled with this fiber so then the re resin is transferred from the resin port okay so you can see it here the resin is transferred or the matrix is transferred here and once the wetting of these fibers with the matrix is done okay and uh, uh, when the once the compactness is over so then it is left for a curing and then the end product is uh, taken out here you can see okay so here uh, the o the two surfaces means are both the surfaces are come in contact with the the mold surface okay so the mold surface finish is going to decide the surface finish which we are going to get it for the end product okay means uh, we can ensure the good surface finish okay for a end product in the rtm method that is a resin transfer method so what are the advantages so design flexibility faster production 
labor savings, dimensional tolerance, surface finish, so lower material wastage and very large and complex shape can be made efficient. Okay. So limitations, so greater tooling design, the construction skills are required, so high tool cost, reinforcement loading may be difficult with the complex parts, so mold design is a complex. See in all these process, okay, if you look into these cold, uh, what you call closed mold process uh, conditions, okay, so one has to see like uh, these are not uh, limited for a single or maybe a job production, okay, so these are meant to produce a, a mass production, okay, so here uh, the designing of a mold and the designing of the equipment uh, in considering the process parameters are going to uh, play an important role to control the process okay but again there is a flexible design flexibility in that one and uh, the production rate will be faster or not but only suited for a mass production okay so the next process in this uh, closed mold uh, process is a compression molding okay so as we have seen in smc that is a sheet molding compounding process the end product from the smc is used in a compression molding okay so that is that acts as a raw material in a compression molding okay so as the name itself indicates here the compression force is applied in order to give a shape to the composite material okay so you can see again here eh? so we're going to have two parts okay so one lower part and upper part so which are clamped here okay and the resin and the reinforcement are placed here okay so and the pressure is applied by the help of a press hydraulic press or a pneumatic press and all so where it is pressed and it is going to take the shape of the mold cavity okay so here uh, the designing of this die okay and this die should be heated up this die should be heated up okay so the designing of this die is going to play an important role to control the uh, process parameter okay so you can see the process using a matched metal dies under pressure to form the reinforcement and the resin in the into the uh, finished part is a compression molding okay the process is uh, suitable for a molding a complex uh, high strength material and as i said the smc or a bulk molding compound it is typically used for a continuous strand mat or a shield molder compound or a bulk molding okay so we can see easily okay so the raw material from a one process can be used as a, a, a raw material for a one more process to complete the things okay a simple process normally uh, the uh, the theory or the principle which they have employed is so having a reinforcement or a matrix okay or a end product of some process is placed over the a die okay and it is compressed from applying the pressure using the press in order to get a suitable structure okay so what are the advantages so high volumes excellent surface finish okay so molding complex high strength huge parts so as i said to finish the process part consistency so limitations i investment okay long tooling time requires pre-processing of a molding material so as i said like say so the whatever the raw material which is required for a compression molding okay is a end product of a some process and one advantage is as i said in the uh, closed mold process so we are going to take get a, a good surface finish in all the sides because uh, so all the sides of the end product are come in contact with the mold surface so the, the the surface finish which you are going to get it at the end product is decided by the surface finish of the mold surfaces okay and uh, uh, the last one so this is not a closed mold process but this one is used for uh, producing a continuous fibers okay so that is what we call as a full trusion process okay so very important process uh, which you normally you use for a, a continuously producing a continuous fiber reinforced composite material okay so as the name itself indicates so if you uh, divide these word full trusion full plus extrusion okay pulled and extruded okay so how we are going to employ this uh, pulling and extrusion so we can see it in this process here okay so here we are going to have a fiber okay so fiber reel okay so which are passed through a, a guide plate okay so then it is uh, passed through a, a resin bar it is passed through a, a resin bar which are uh, passed through oh, into the uh, resin bath okay so, so it, once it come it is coming out of the resin bath so we are going to call it as a resin impregnated fibers okay so resin is uh, coated over the fiber so then we are going to have a preformer preformer means uh, so it is going to ensure the proper thickness of the resin over the 
uh, fiber and it is stretched in a proper direction so after that one they are passed into a forming and a cutting die okay so here so the shape of the end product is decided okay so what type of end product which you are going to have it is decided by this die so whether you want it in a uh, what you call uh, i section or a circular section so all those things will be dependent on the, the structure of the die okay so if uh, the die is in a i section okay then the end product which you are going to get it will be in a die okay so here this die will be heated up okay so that is what we say called as a forming forming to give a shape and curing to get a uh, cure the process okay so in order to ensure that uh, the compactness of the resin with the fiber material and then these uh, product is uh, pulled by a, a set of rollers here okay that is what is pulling so here it's extruded and here it is a pulled and uh, uh, then once the product comes out of the process then they are cut according to the length okay so whatever the length which is required to uh, produce or uh, if they, there is a desired length of an end product then they can be taken out from here okay this is somewhat like similar to the uh, filament winding okay so where we are going to have a fiber peel where we are going to have a guide plate okay, rollers so which are in, uh, impregnated or immersed in the resin bath then we are going to take out so only the last setup will change okay in the filament winding it is wounded on a, a mandrel but here it is passed through a die which is going to decide the shape and it is pulled by the rollers to give the pretension wires okay so instead of a pre former pre performer so in the filament winding we had a nip rollers so which are going to control the the thickness of the resin over the uh, fiber okay so now uh, what are the advantages so production is a continuous material scrap rate is a low the requirement for a support material is eliminated okay that is a breathers bleeders or whatever film bagging all those things okay tapes and all normally which we use for a smc okay all those things are eliminated so labor requirement are a low okay so limitation limited to a constant or a near constant uh, cross section so whatever the cross section which are symmetric okay so there we can go with the uh, these uh, type of a process okay so heated die cost can be high so here so when we use the dies for forming and a curing okay so the dies which are which are uh, able to withstand high temperature say, say for example the dies which are made up of a, a ceramic material okay so which are uh, uh, difficult to machine okay difficult to have a machining process and all so that costs a uh, high cost in order or high investment to have this process again uh, so wherever it comes to a, having a continuous fiber a reinforced fiber material okay with the a constant or a symmetric uh, cross section so then we can go with the these uh, type of a process that's a full tool okay so this is not a, a closed mode process okay just we have included this one in order to ensure that so this falls under the category of frp that is a fiber reinforced plastic composites or a polymer composite material okay so this completes the discussion on the process which are limited for a open mold and a closed mold process which are limited to produce the fiber reinforced okay polymer matrix whether it may be a thermosets or maybe a thermoplastic okay so again those things are dependent on the temperature and the pressure which you are going to use so as we discussed in the uh, initial sections okay so thermosets normally require high temperature to soften and give a shape but thermoplastic requires a low temperature and they get they may be transferred to a molten state okay so like that so that's the end of these uh, uh, processing of a composite material for a polymer matrix.